Good to see Great to see you, you too. Fancy nice meeting you here. <laughs> <laughs> Have a seat. <laughs> I'm so glad you could join us today. Yeah. Wow, what a heated topic. Yes. Racism and anti-Semitism. Now, you've been at the forefront of this fight for how long? I don't know. <laughs> since birth? <laughs> since birth, yeah. No, uh, but, but certainly professionally, I think since about maybe 2006. Okay, you were a lawyer, and then you transitioned all of that brainiacness into uh, humanitarian activism for the Jewish community. Yeah. And so what motivated you to do that? There Was there like a defining moment? Or? There were a few. Um, I enjoyed being a lawyer uh, in active practice, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, being a lawyer, you're helping one person at a time, okay. and there's only so much you can do, and you're limited by what the laws are in Canada. And when you think about it, and, and how can I help more people? Mm. Uh, how can I do more? How can I get beyond just the restrictions of the Canadian judicial system, get out there and try and change the laws, make Canada a better place for everybody? Mm. And also, a little bit, you're governed by your clients. You have clients, they pay you money, that's how you pay the bills. <laughs> and uh, so you fight for their particular topics, but there's other topics that are of interest. So really, right. it's, it's, I think it's a, it's a blessing for me that I'm able to, to do something and contribute to Canadian society right. in a way that I really believe in, because I don't think that's an opportunity everybody gets to fight for things that they want to do to make changes yeah. and to sometimes see changes happen. Wow, well, that's amazing. And you do such a great job. You are so well respected at the Parliament of Canada. I've seen you in action there, uh, different points over the years. But could you give us a bit of a crash course on what's been happening in Canada under the whole topic of hate crimes, specifically against the Jewish community? Sure. So, um, and so maybe taking a step back, where I'm with B'nai B'rith. Uh, so since 1875, B'nai B'rith has been representing the grassroots community in Canada. And um, we have a League for Human Rights, and that's our human rights division of the organization. And for 35 years, we have been um, putting out an audit, an audit of anti-Semitic incidents. Okay. So when anybody hears about this is the number of anti-Semitic incidents in Canada, B'nai B'rith is the one that's compiling that. And right. that's used by StatsCan, U.S. State Department, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It's informed because the organization has a 24-7 anti-hate hotline where we receive calls every day mm -hmm. um, about anti-Semitism, discrimination generally, and we try and help people out. We try and um, help them as best as we can through the problem, but also but put it into that audit form so that we know what the trend lines are like in Canada. Now, when you say hate crimes are reported to this hotline, like what kind of things? Like what kind of... It can be anything, and it's broader than just hate crimes. Mm -hmm. So the police keep hate crime numbers. StatsCan puts out hate crime numbers against the Jewish community, against all sorts of groups, Christians, Muslims, um, it could be for sexual identity, it could be for anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, we monitor more than that, it's the anti-Semitism. So not ne necessarily something that fits the criminal definition of hate, but yet it's clearly anti-Semitic and it meets the definition of anti-Semitism. So for example, it could be a student on a university campus mm -hmm. that's discriminated against. It okay. could be in the home. Uh, sometimes we'll get a call, um, a, a mezuzah is a, a religious article that uh, Jews put on their um, doorways and uh, it contains some blessings inside of it. And uh, so sometimes that could get um, targeted because it's an obvious thing. I know that a, a Jewish individual lives in this, in this home. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it could be in the workplace. Um, so people get targeted in different ways and often just everyday normal people, they don't know how to deal with it. It can be a greatly traumatic experience when you get targeted for who you are as a person. And so we try and work through that. Uh, sometimes there's an answer, sometimes there is not. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but that's that's part of the role of the League for Human Rights of B'nai okay. B'rith. Now the reason we wanted to do this show is because yeah. in a minute we're going to throw to a clip at the House of Commons of Ikra Khalid uh, tabling Motion 103, which sure stirred up a flurry of debate on this topic. Uh, not at only anti-Semitism, but racism. But I remember when we were watching the dialogue surrounding Motion 103 at the very beginning, some um, statistics came out that actually showed that the Jewish community has more recorded hate crimes against it than any other community in Canada, including the Muslim community, including Christians, or those that are being discriminated against uh, with hate crimes for gender, that type of thing. Is that true? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. And, and uh, the, the stats bear it. Um, we're, through our audit, we only track anti-Semitism, but right. stats can itself, and even... Um, so this would be a stats... Canada sure. number or report. So, yeah, so so from the latest years that Stats Canada was keeping these numbers, okay. that, that was their decision. And, and you have to remember at the same time, not only were the greatest number 
of criminal acts against the Jewish community. We're actually a much smaller community. I don't think many people understand wow. how the small numbers of the Jewish What's community. What's the population of the Jewish community? So, in it, you know, it's hard to say, but it's, you know, it could be uh, 300,000, 350, okay. possibly something like that. And, okay. you know, by comparison, I know, uh, I mean, for Christians, I mean, like, mil yeah. in the millions, yeah. certainly. Yeah. Um, you know, the Muslim community is probably about a million people. So, but if right. you think about it for a second, not only do we have the highest percentage, but in terms of the raw numbers targeting our community. Yeah, that's alarming. So, it's alarming. If you're in the Jewish community, yes. that's scary. And, and this was something uh, when I I had the ability to testify at M103, and we can talk about that in a moment, yeah. uh, but, but up there on Parliament, that was something that I raised as part of our testimony right. was, you know, reminding parliamentarians per that, capita, that, the numbers that per capita just... and the raw numbers, wow. it, the Jewish community is targeted. And, and we just use that as uh, part of the testimony and driving, you know, part of the, the commentary that we had. Okay. Well, I can't wait to get your insight on Motion 103. So right now, what we're going to do. So we're actually going to throw to the clip. This is Ikra Khaled actually tabling her motion in the House of Commons and then her final submission. And then we'll pick up the conversation right, right after that. So let's watch this clip. Okay.